All right, kids, today on the 5-Minute Book Review, starring Curtis and Ian, we take a look at Boilerplate, History's Mechanical Marvel. This is historical fiction. Yes, historical fiction. you think there'd be a catchy term for historical fiction already. Histofic? Whatever, let's move on. Boilerplate is a book that chronicles the adventures of a fictitious robot during real historical events. Sounds confusing? It isn't. Well, maybe it is. I don't know anymore. Toot toot, all aboard the train wreck. Five minute book review with Curtis and Ian and we're talking about Boilerplate. First and foremost, I'd like to point out that I don't wear the same clothes every week. Someone just keeps changing between every one we do. Boilerplate is a book about history's mechanical marvel, a Victorian era steam robot. Okay, this is a spoiler alert. It is fictional, it's not real. No matter how good this book looks, and it does look good. It looks so real inside. He's doctored the photos that he's made. The whole premise is this, this robot was involved in history throughout this era, running with Teddy Roosevelt and Lawrence of Arabia and so on and so forth. And the artifacts that they've created, the stories feel so real that people actually have thought that this book was real. I will admit, even in my good sense, I had a twinge of a moment when I first saw it and went, there weren't actually steam robots, were they? It, it's that well done that it brings that out in you. It's, uh, it's an absolutely fantastic book. Although, again, don't be fooled. There weren't steam robots at any point. Ian, I don't know what to say about this book. I'm sorry. I, I tried to get into it. It's not a bad book. I, I, I just, why, why, why are you publishing this? Why, why is this coming out? It's, you know, it's like clip art. I mean, it's, again, I, I hate to use this again because I used this for uh, that other book we talked about, which I, which I didn't like, about how it's like, it feels like a Saturday Night Live skit stretched into a movie. It's like, yeah, the pictures are great, but after the fifth page, I'm just like, eh, skim, skim. And that is the biggest tragedy is people are going to read this and think it's real. It's like, this is a book that's 10 years ahead of its time. If this came out in 1999, this, yeah, absolutely, this should be a bestseller. People should read this and laugh, but people are a lot dumber 10 years later, and technology's a lot better, and yeah, this looks real. I can see people, you know, going to school and talking about boilerplate and having to be schooled and corrected, and uh, I just, who's buying this book, Ian? Who's reading this book? I mean, who's this for? What's the target audience? I, I, just, I, I try, can't wrap my head around this book, Ian. Um, it's too bad. I think it's, I think what it is, it's a brilliant piece of steampunk fiction. I don't think it was, I don't think it's behind its time. I don't think it would have been better 10 years ago. I think it's great now. I mean, the whole concept of the Robots of the Victorian Age website is, is brilliant. Like it's, it's, it's creating a false history. I mean, it's, I mean, again, I agree with you. It's not going to appeal to everybody. It's not going to be a huge demographic that's interested in this, but you know what? It doesn't make it any less brilliant. He looks like Bender. <laughs> it's like page after page. That's what I kept thinking. He he kind of looks like Bender, and I mean, it was it was good. I got kind of the uh, Forrest Gump feel going back through history and looking at it through a you know a steam powered robot's eyes. But again, it's just like oh, there's another doctored picture, which you know I probably could have done. Probably wouldn't have looked as good, but uh, it just just page after page, hey, it's a robot in history that isn't really history. Are you tricking people into learning about history, Ian? Is that what this book is? Oh, that's what I'm hoping for, anyway. <laughs> okay. It'd be nice. I, I would save me the trouble of writing it all myself if people just read this book, too. I don't know. I think it's something that if you're going to pick it up and read it, you have to be willing to lose yourself in the entire premise and say, I'm going to believe in the context of this book that this robot was real, and I'm going to read about its history and enjoy it for what it is. Fair enough. I mean, if it doesn't get you in, maybe that's the fault of the book. I don't know, but it's got to be something you've got to be willing to do. It, to me, I flipped it open, I looked at it. Yeah, other people could have done the doctored pictures, but could they have come up with so many concepts and put them all together to create this history of this fictional robot, to create all these situations that he obviously wasn't in at any point, you hope anyway. And maybe, just maybe, maybe it's all real. I'm not saying it's a bad book. It's no. just I personally couldn't get into it. I was like, I'm wasting my time. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's fair what, enough, what section is this even in? Like, what do you call this book? Is this a humor? Is it history? Is it just leave it on the floor? I, I think it's one of those things that if you shelve it in history, you get a lot of angry people. <laughs> Especially the ones, not so much the ones that don't get it, but the ones that do and are like, seriously, what is this doing here? I guess if you're a big history nerd, thumbs up, go crazy. Have yourselves a good old chuckle of the robot that was uh, ahead of its time. That's good. Give it a shot.
when they're like, seriously, what is this doing here?